Hello, I'm a point. Uh, by the way, that shrinking sphere isn't really me. It's just a graphic representation of me. I'm not trying to make a point because I'm, I'm already a point. So what is a point? Now, well, that's a rather long definition, so feel free to pause the video if you want to read it. If you'd rather I just get straight to the point, then here are the key points. A point is the basic element of any measurable form. It is so for even having it no dimensions, neither height, width, nor length, its association causes the existence of such. Last but not least, well, actually it is the least, the point in geometry is the basic visual imaginable representation for the minimal structure of existence. So let's get back to where that spiffy little sphere went because that's exactly where I am right now. Do you see me? I'm about a quarter screen left and halfway above dead center on your screen. See me yet? Well, it's kind of hard to see me without any reference material, so here, I'll add an arrow. I'm right there, just past the tip of that arrow. Still can't see me? All right, I'll add a grid. That should help. Now do you see me? No? Okay, I'll narrow down my position using a smaller section of the grid. Nah, still not working. Let's try using a magnifying glass. No, that was a waste of time. Let's try zooming into a smaller section of the grid. Boom, I'm right there. See me? I've just passed the tip of that arrow. Come on, man, I'm right there. Okay, then let's zoom in even more. Damn, still no point. Let's lose the arrow and increase magnification to about 10 times normal. Still nothing. All right, let's try 100 times magnification. Hey, we may be getting somewhere. Still no point, but at least progress is being made. Let's try 1,000 times magnification. Oh man, look at those germs. You should really clean your screen more often. Yeah, I know, you still can't see me. So let's dive in even deeper to 10,000 times magnification. Ew, nope. That's definitely not me. That, my friends, is bacteria. Tiny as they may be, they aren't nearly as small as a point. I am big time small. At 100,000 times magnification, we find those nasty little viruses everybody's been afraid of, but still no point. At this level, we've moved beyond the limits of optical magnification, but we could still go deeper based on relative size. At the 10 to the negative eight meter scale, we find groups of molecules all hanging out together. Yeah, they're, they're having a party, but apparently no points were invited, and that doesn't seem fair. At the 10 to the negative 10 meter scale, we see individual atoms that form all kinds of structure, but nary a point to be found. You know, and we're running out of available space to find me. Okay, now we're completely off the scale with these bright little photons, but even in all of their shimmering glory, they still can't shed any light on my location. Even within this minuscule arena of quarks, electrons, and neutrinos, what science calls point particles, you still can't see me. The fact remains that I'm still sitting there right at the tip of that arrow, so what else can we do? Let's see what the smallest arena of multidimensional space has to offer. What the, what the hell is this? Tiny little heads? Oh no, hey, it's Max Planck. Hi, Max. He's the guy who decided enough was enough and established the Planck length, otherwise known as the quantum of length the smallest measurement of length that supposedly has any meaning. Meaning what? Does that mean there's no room left for me? Maybe we should dig a little deeper into whatever lies beyond the physical realm. Let's travel into the mind of Max Planck and everyone else who's ever existed by crossing over from physical structure into the non-dimensional realm of consciousness. Humans call this arena consciousness, but in reality, it's just the raw information used to construct everything in your physical reality. Here is where you can find non-dimensional levels of existence like thoughts, mathematics, logic, and other existential concepts that can't be switched around in a test tube. The only barrier to what can be conceived within this zero-dimensional realm is logic. In here, only what is deemed logically conceivable can exist. When consciousness is pushed to its extremes, we eventually end up with an infinitely existing God to which nothing is conceivably greater, smarter, more powerful, or more ubiquitous. This concept of God represents the highest realm of conceivability, and thusly why so many humans are drawn to it. We also have everything in existence emerging from an immeasurably small point of infinite gravity and density called singularity, to which science claims represents the origin of the universe. Big Bang singularity represents the lowest conceptual limit of conceivability, and thusly why so many humans are drawn to it. Between the two endpoints on this spectrum of conceivability lies a multitude of possibilities. We discover that consciousness is free to imagine astounding levels of virtual complexity that can exist not only in the universe and nature, but also in the many creations your species have brought into physical reality. 
Complexity can be further reduced to the simplest geometrical shapes that represent the bricks and mortar of reality. But is this as far as this journey can take us? Not at all. There's definitely more. Beyond the geometry of structure lies an even deeper level. It's an arena of non-dimensional logic and mathematics that forms the geometry that forms the structure that forms your reality. Everything in existence requires mathematics to exist. Yes, mathematics is a foundational property that holds reality together. But even mathematics can be reduced down to fundamental particles with numbers. Numbers are to mathematics what geometry is to structure, what particles are to multidimensionality, what DNA is to life, and what your self-awareness is to you. So do numbers represent the end of our journey? Well, not exactly. Just like everything else, numbers can be reduced down to a more basic foundational structure. It's called logic. The juxtaposition of zero and one represents the lowest logical state of numerology, with one representing the total amount of existence that is present, and zero representing the amount of whatever does not have an amount. So do you see me now? Am I the number one? Actually, you don't see me, and I'm not the number one. The number one is just a numerical amount of me. It's what you get when I'm counted, and the only other information attached to me other than my self-existence. The number one is what's printed on my business card and gets handed out to everything in existence. So if I'm not the number one, and that's just a numerical amount of me, then what am I? I am existence. I am that which is separated from that which is not. I am alpha and omega, positive and negative, and all points between. I am what logic, numbers, mathematics, geometry, consciousness, dimensions, fundamental particles, physical structure, life, self-awareness, and what the coordinates of a single mathematical point are showing you necessarily exist. Even when you can't see me, I'm there, and that's the point. So I hope I've made my point perfectly clear because, well, without a point, existence is pointless.